Hey everyone, this is another acrylic painting on 16 by 20 inch stretched canvas and as is almost always the case, I start by simultaneously killing the canvas which is just getting flat paint all over the canvas covering the white primer but also blocking in the image which is getting a very rough general placement and color and value of all of the major forms and then once that's in I can begin all of the layers that are used to add detail and refine things as I go. And there are a lot of benefits to this kind of workflow. One of the biggest being just your sort of psychological freedom in knowing that no brushstroke you put down has to be a perfect part of a finished whole, that it's a building process and changing and refining as you go. But also because you're working on everything and building it all up at the same time, then it's extremely natural to automatically balance the value and contrast and colors of the whole painting to make sure everything works well together. Whereas if you focus entirely on and one thing like the background first and then paint the foreground into it, it can be much harder to arrive at a very balanced finished painting. One useful trick to know when you're working with acrylics is that it's usually a good idea to be overly bold with especially your highlights but also your shadows as well while you're building the form and refining the shape and placement of all your shadows and highlights. And this is because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, acrylic paints, even the colors that are supposed to be opaque, become a little bit translucent when they dry. This is especially true with highlights. You can put highlights down and you think you've mixed the perfect color, and then once the paint dries, your highlight virtually disappears. So it's much better to be really bold than use almost pure white for your highlights on like a white or a gray object like this sheep here. And when it dries, it'll probably be much closer to the actual highlight color you're looking for. But the other thing is, even if it is too bright once it's dry, you can use what I call a unifying wash, which is to make sort of a mid-tone and then thin that with a lot of water in the case of acrylics and brush that over the area in between the highlights and the mid-tone or even over that whole area and this will help sort of blend everything back together and tone down your height. And that was especially true for this painting when there's less specific things of interest than the few things that are there have to be more carefully rendered and detailed to maintain interest. And in the case of this white furred animal, it was really important to capture all of the richness and sense of thickness and wooliness of this fur, which took countless layers of highlight, shadow, and medium tones. And many times over the course of this painting, you may have seen the damp rag to remove some problematic brushstrokes. And you see here, the last two letters of my name got blurry, so I erased them quickly with the wet rag and painted them back in. And after the signature, it's the last few tweaks, adding a wash of sunlight and enhancing the blues of some shadows. And here we are with the finished painting. And here's the finished painting. You'll notice I took a little chip out of the sheep's horn to add a little more interest. If you do like this or any of my other paintings, please visit my page on fineartamerica.com where you can purchase anything from beautifully framed museum quality prints of my paintings to throw pillows, cell phone cases, and even shower curtains of my art. Or share this video with your friends if you think they might also enjoy watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and will allow me to make more art and videos more frequently. And thanks very much for watching.